I think almost all of us know, and if you don't, I want to share with you that young people today are experiencing depression, anxiety, self-hate, self-harm more than any generation before them. Now, I have theories on that. I think because there's so much social media and there's so much that are being bombarded with these kids, with our young people, that they're hearing all the junk in the world at a faster pace and at an increasing rate than any generation before, which I think plays into it. But we have to understand, above all, this is the work of our enemy, the devil. Jesus described the devil as the father of lies. The devil hates God and hates those who love God. And so the devil wants more than anything to fill us with lies that take us away from God's truth and take us away from who we are in Jesus Christ. You see, when the Apostle Paul wrote this letter we've been studying, Colossians, he wrote this letter because their culture was so loud and the lies were so great that they were beginning to abandon the truth of Jesus for a watered-down Jesus. They were abandoning the truth of the gospel for a watered-down gospel. Ultimately, their identity was being altered because they no longer were seeing themselves in the supremacy, authority, and sufficiency of Jesus. And that has not changed. It just looks different. And as I shared, that there is such, such an attack on our young people. And all of these self-hate all this self-harm, it's getting younger and younger that it's being manifested. And so as the church, we need to be aware of the plans and schemes of the enemy. We need to speak the truth, pray the truth, lead the next generation in truth. But we also need to look at our own selves because if we're honest, a lot of us struggle with a lot of these lies as well. So today what we're going to do is we're going to expose some lies of the enemy. Scripture reveals in James chapter 4, if you resist him, he'll flee. One of the ways we resist him is exposing his lies and holding on to the truth. But we're going to do so by starting by looking at what Paul reveals in Colossians 2 verses 6 through 7. Because what he's doing is he's speaking to these believers who are young in their faith. And he is outlining to them what it looks like to live for Jesus. And these are reminders. This is truth we all need. So this is where we're going to start. Colossians 2, 6 through 7. This is what Paul wrote over 2,000 years ago, but what the Holy Spirit is speaking to followers of Jesus today. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Right there, out of the gate, you've accepted Jesus. Now follow him. Don't follow the world. Don't follow your own desires. Follow Jesus. Live for him. And then he goes on and says, let your roots grow down into him. Dig deep into Jesus relationally, spiritually, surrendering, seeking him. And then he says, and let your lives be built on him. Every area of your life, built on the foundation, on the solid rock of Jesus. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Dig deep into Christ. Follow Jesus. Build your life upon him, and then your life will grow in truth, God's truth, the truth of who Jesus is and who we are. That is so crucial to every Christian's spiritual walk. I mean, right there, you talk about what is an outline for spiritual growth, discipleship. I mean, it is all right there. Follow Jesus, dig deep, build your life upon him, and you then will walk in the truth of Jesus. And the reason why Paul is revealing this is, again, because they are bombarded by the lies of the enemy, bombarded by lies that try to take them away from who they are in Jesus Christ. And so we can apply this to our lives as well. But here is how Paul puts it in verse 8. He says, don't let anyone capture you. I love that imagery. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking 
and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Right here, he reveals where all of this is coming from, where all of these thoughts, all of these lies, where is all of it coming that then moves us further and further away from who we are in Jesus Christ? It is from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. The spiritual powers, the father of lies, the devil. We have to understand we're in a spiritual battle. We're in a spiritual battle for truth against lies. And the devil is the father of lies. And he is coming at every generation, and especially, I think, this young generation coming up. He is coming to try to capture them by his lies so they see themselves not through Jesus and what he's done, but through what the world says. So this is an important message. If you're at the point in life where you've grown through a lot of this and you're not currently struggling with this, then there are people in your life. There is a next generation coming up behind you who's struggling with it. Or if you are struggling with this, may God reveal the truth over the lie. Because the reality is the devil has lies that he constantly attacks each one of us with. Do we see them? Do we submit them to truth? And do we see ourselves through Jesus? That is really what it means to follow him, dig deep into him, then also build our life upon him. That's when we stay in truth. Well, we're going to uncover two lies that the devil is attacking so many people with. And then we're going to reveal the truth. The first is this, lie number one. You're not enough. You're not enough. A lot of people struggle with these two words. Not enough. Not smart enough. Not skinny enough. Not talented enough. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. I don't, I don't have to fill them all in. You've heard those in your head so many times throughout your life. Not enough. And the lie starts when we're young. It starts when we compare ourselves to someone else, or someone else does the comparing for us, but no matter what, it doesn't take long until we continually beat ourselves down, and we never measure up to our own standards or someone else's standards, and then we have that lie over us, and it completely affects how we see ourselves, how we see others. It is rooted in insecurity. It's rooted in self-doubt and mistrust. The lie that we are not enough. And boy, does it transition to every season of life. Starts when you're young, works its way into adolescence, works its way into adulthood, marriage, parenting, your whole life. If you do not see yourself through Jesus and allow the truth to overcome this lie. But here again is what we need to be reminded of, what Paul says. In verse 8, he says, Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies, high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking, from the spiritual powers of this world, rather than from Christ. That's the key, rather than from Christ. This lie that we are not enough means we are looking at ourselves rather than looking at Christ. We look at our life and what we achieve and what we do and where we measure up and where we don't separate from Jesus. We have to see who we are, our value, our worth, our identity in Christ alone and what he has done. That's where Paul goes in verse 12. He says, for you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. You were buried with Christ when you were baptized. And with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. So when we give our life to Jesus, our old life dies. Our old life dies. That is our ability to be good enough dies because we no longer have to be good enough because Jesus was good enough for us. That's where we get to the truth, where we can live in a newness and we can lay aside those lies and reject them because now we are found in Christ. So here's the truth that battles this lie. The truth, we don't have to be enough because Jesus is enough. Now I know that's simple and it sounds all savvy and great. 
I spent a lot of time on that. Hope you are impressed. Not really. But the point is, is that it's simple, but it's hard to live. It's hard to live in that. Because we are in such a society where it's all about measuring up. What do you get in school? You get grades. It's always about measuring up. Everything is about being measured, rated. You didn't do good enough. You're not enough. You're not like your sister. You're not like your brother. You're not like this. You're not like that. Our whole life we do that. And we can only live in freedom when we receive this truth that we were never meant to be enough. Because Jesus is enough. Our need to be enough was buried with Christ. Through faith in Jesus Christ, we were raised to a new life. And that new life is not based upon us. Our new life is based upon him. Our new life is based upon Jesus being perfect, so we didn't have to be perfect. It's based upon Jesus being sinless when we can never be sinless. It's based upon Jesus being righteous, and we are righteous because he is righteous. We can never be enough, and we don't need to be. And there is an amazing freedom when we can walk in that and live in that. And as we celebrate Mother's Day, and I'm going through this, and I know there are a lot of moms who are praying, and they are fighting for their kids to receive this truth. And I'm telling you, the church needs to fight for the next generation to receive this truth. Because that lie, you're not enough, constantly beats you down, and the devil loves this lie. Because what it ultimately does is it sees our worth, our identity, separate from Jesus. And that's why the truth is so important. We don't have to be enough because Jesus is enough. By God's grace, he gave us Jesus to be all sufficient. All we ever need, all we could ever want to be and have is found in Jesus Christ. And when we live in that truth, when we every day allow that truth to wash over us, we will take away the power of the enemy and we will dismantle that lie. And when we ultimately see ourselves through Jesus and his sufficiency as our value and worth, we celebrate our weaknesses. I mean, how many young people do you see? I'm even going to go, how many adults do we see celebrating our weaknesses? When we do and there are people that do that. It's people who find their worth in Jesus. And it's okay if they make mistakes because their mistakes don't define them. Jesus defines them. You see, that's what the Apostle Paul was able to get to in his faith, being able to see his worth and value in Jesus. Then he could celebrate his weaknesses because in his weaknesses is when he was strong. Because Jesus was a strength. This is what Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 2. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 2. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient to you. He's talking about God said this to him. Jesus spoke this to him. Spiritually, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Then we say, I don't care what grade you give me. Because it's not about grades. It's about grace, and it's about what Jesus has done for me, and that's who I am, and that is the newness. And then Paul goes on, he says, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties, for when I am weak then I am strong. When we live celebrating our weaknesses, we live celebrating our Savior who defines us. We live in His work, the identity of who we are in Him. And then we can grow in this truth where verses 6 through 7 reveals that. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow Him. We follow Him which means we follow and live in his truth. Let your roots grow down deep in him. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Church, we have to be praying. 
not only for our own life, for every generation to live in that truth. Who we are in Jesus Christ, he is enough. He is enough. The next lie we have to expose, and this is a sad trend where I've seen people struggle with a lot. And it's lie number two. You're a failure. You're a failure. I mean, that word failure hits hard. It hits hard. And we got people, not, not just people out in the world, but people in the church who's carrying around that banner that they are a failure. Whether it's feeling like a failure in a specific area or in general, it's feeling burdened with not being able to get things right, not doing enough, not being like someone who seems like they have it all together. But let me tell you straight away that this is not from God. This is not from God. This is from the devil. And just like the devil loves that lie that you're not enough, he loves the lie that you're a failure. Because when we believe that lie, then we stop trusting God. We stop believing that God can bring good. We stop believing that there's any good in us. We stop believing that we are more than overcomers. We stop living in hope of victory because we are always defeated. And the devil wants us to reject the truth in Romans 8, 37. Know in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors. We're not just conquerors, but in Jesus, we're more than conquerors. And that's only when we follow him and see our life through him. That is only when we dig deep into the truth of Jesus and the victory of Jesus. That's only when we build our life on him. Because again, then we see our life through him and what he has done. And we see ultimately his redeeming work that is faithful when we surrender everything to him. You see, to reject the lie that we are failures has to start with the truth that we all fail. But that doesn't make us a failure. Again, that probably took me 45 minutes to come up with because I'm slow. Okay? I'm not kidding. I'm like, Where is that? oh, this makes sense. It's so easy, but it's so hard to receive because these lies are so deep. And we have to say, God, may I receive your truth. Break the chains of these lies. It's so simple. We all fail, but that doesn't make us a failure. I knew someone several years ago that they struggled with this failure lie more than anybody I'd seen before. Every mistake, it could be that they forgot something. Immediately, they were waving the flag of failure. It could have been anything. They misspoke someone's name, failure. Doesn't matter what it was. The devil had this lie on speed dial. And I remember talking to them and praying with them. They needed to see instead that we all fall short. We all fail at things. But that doesn't make us a failure because actually when we fail, those are opportunities to grow. Those are opportunities to learn. Those are times that God moves. Again, as Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12, he said, in our weakness is when God is our strength. So we have to see that when we mess up, that does not make us a failure. That's just an opportunity for God to change us. Which again is why Paul could celebrate in that which is why it's so important for all of us to be able to reject that lie and be able to see that there is an identity that is true in Jesus. And it is not failure. That identity is forgiven. And that is a game changer. That is a game changer. Let's go ahead and look at Colossians 2. We're going to jump ahead to Colossians 2, 13 through 14, because here's where we see this truth. Colossians 2, 13 through 14. You were dead 
because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all your sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. And here is the truth we need for this failure lie. The truth is this. You are more than an overcomer because God doesn't see you as a failure, but instead forgiven. Washed clean. Made new. God never puts the failure stamp on us because through Jesus Christ, all he sees is forgiven. That is a game changer. Church, that is so important. God doesn't want us to ever look at ourselves as a failure, but as a sinner saved by grace, a sinner dearly loved through faith in Jesus Christ. We are made new and washed clean. We are set free and we are changed. That is the power of Jesus. That is the power of forgiveness. And that is our identity. Forgiven. Forgiven. Now, with each of these lies or the many other lies that I don't have time to cover today, it's important to be able to understand, again, the devil is the father of lies, recognize he's the enemy, but then be able to identify those lies and then be able to reject those lies, but more importantly, speak that truth, receive that truth, read that truth, memorize that truth over and over and over again. There are certain lies that the devil has speed dial on me. We all do, if we're honest, if we're brutally honest. There are lies that the devil has on speed dial. And what I have learned, and I still have to walk this out, I'm not standing up here as somebody who lives this out perfectly, but I know the warfare that there are scriptures that speak against that lie, and I have to memorize those scriptures. Maybe some of you don't memorize scripture. Put it on a post-it note. Put it on your mirror. Put it on your fridge. Put it on your desk. Whatever it is, put it on your computer where you have that truth. That scriptural truth, God's word does not return void, which means there is power in God's word. It does not return empty when we submit to the authority of God's word. And we need to keep on taking our life and putting it under that truth and rejecting those lies. So whatever that scripture is for you, I know for me, I have those certain scriptures and it's all day long. It's Warfare. Get out of my head, you stinking devil. Get out of my head. I belong to Jesus. I am his, and here is the truth in your face. And I press on. Spiritual warfare. The Apostle Paul captured it so powerfully in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Some of you are familiar with this, the armor of God. We are in a battle the devil is coming at us. He's the father of lies. God has given us everything we need to stand our ground and resist the devil. But we have to live this out every single day. This is how we walk in victory over those lies. This is how we live in the identity and victory of Jesus. Because it is a battle. And we have the victor and his name is Jesus Christ. Ephesians 6, 10-18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with a belt of truth buckled around your waist, with a breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted in the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. 
Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. That is spiritual warfare. That is the victory God's given us through his word, through his son, through his spirit. But we have to put on that armor every day and reject the lies of the enemy. He is a thief and a liar, but the truth is greater than a lie. And we are called to find our identity and worth in Christ alone. I'd like to close today with a video clip. If you've not watched this movie, maybe you're not a movie person. I love movies. This is a Christian movie, and I think it is excellent. It is so well done. It's called Mom's Night Out. If you've not seen it, oh my goodness, you have to see it. It is a Christian movie. But in this clip, we're going to see, we see the relevancy of these lies from the devil. They apply to us. But we also see the hope and encouragement that we are perfectly loved just the way we are. Let's see this video. All my friends are in jail, Bones. Well, I know how that feels. I'm a failure. I have failed again. That's all I do. I had a plan. I was gonna help myself and help my friends unplug and have fun and then Bridget happened so then I thought I could fix that too and instead I can't I can't get in front of it no matter how hard I try no matter how much I give I'm just I'm not enough. For who? What? Not enough for who? I mean, Sean, the kids, for my mother, God, everybody, I don't know. You? Not enough for you. I was raised in church. This might surprise you, but I have since drifted from the faith. Shocker. My mama worked three jobs. I never met my daddy. I had to get up early and walk to school, but I'd wait up for her coming home from the diner. I'd wait up every night because she'd come home and she'd put me to bed and she'd tell me something. She'd tell me the same thing every night. He loves you, Charles. No matter who you are, no matter what you do or how far you run, Jesus will always be loving you with his arms open wide just for being you. And I'd smile and go off to sleep. You know, I saw something on Pinterest the other day. It was an eagle just caring for its young. It's a beautiful thing to watch one of God's creations just doing what he made it to do. Just being an eagle. And that's enough. Y'all spend so much time beating yourselves up. Must be exhausting. 
tell you something, girl. I doubt the good Lord made a mistake giving your kiddos the mama he did. So you just be you. He'll take care of the rest. You are a child of God. You are perfectly loved. You are made new. You are forgiven. And you are all you need to be when your life is in Jesus. He is more than enough. The devil is a liar. The world is full of lies. But God has given us truth, the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but him, but through him, and his name is Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for loving us with a perfect love. Thank you, God, that you receive us right where we're at, but you love us enough not to leave us there, but you lead us into victory. You lead us into truth. You lead us into grace. You lead us into love. You lead us into new beginnings. You lead us into victory over lies. You lead us into victory over the devil. God, thank you. That is all through Christ. And may it always be for Christ, because who we are, the only thing that matters is who we are in Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. May we live in that truth. May we fight for the next generation and the next generation and the next generation to receive that truth. Because God, the only thing that matters is Jesus. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.